Hello, welcome back to the channel. Thank you to any and all new subscribers. There's a few of you, I think, this week uh, or this past week. Welcome to the channel. Uh, my name is Jason. I'm down here in Eastern North Carolina, growing zone 8A, and I'm building a garden on an acre and a half. You can follow along with my trials, tribulations, stumbling, fumbling. It's like when you watch those people who just decide to leave their city jobs and go out to the country and try to build a house with zero experience. It's that kind of thing. Uh, except I'm not as young or as good looking as most of those people. And today we're gonna be planting garlic. But first, I wanna talk about a couple of things that happened over the last few days. We got a frost. We got two light frosts. The first one was a little worse than the second one. So I think it was Wednesday night, Thursday morning, we got hit with a frost. It was a light frost, but it was enough to knock back. Well, it pretty much took out all my dahlias. I think I maybe have one or two that are okay. That somehow survived, maybe. I don't know, I have to go finish cleaning them up maybe this weekend or later today. Uh, my elephant ears got smacked around pretty hard. There's a bunch of stuff that just went right over because they can't handle the frost and that's okay. It just starts incentivizing me to turn around and start cleaning up a lot of the things that need to be cleaned up. Now I will be taking you out back out to the Dahlia Garden to discuss more about that in the upcoming weeks because there's things I wanna do out in the garden that I wanna to talk to you guys about. And next week we're gonna start planting something like 130 alliums. Yeah, it's 130 alliums. Now it's not the most outrageous thing that you've heard a YouTuber doing. <laughs> Although it's quite a bit for me. I ran into a couple of sales early in the summer when they started doing sort of fall pre-sales. And then recently I just picked up 10 more or five more, five more Mount Everest alliums from Longfield Gardens. They were having a sale and I grabbed, it was like five for 10, which I think is a great deal because Mount Everest alliums, are, they are fairly pricey. Normally the cheapest, most common allium is the purple sensation, which I just got, like I said, like 130 of them. And I think I got some of the Mount Everest's and I got, I think a couple of others, but you're going to have to tune in next week. So if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, click that bell icon to be notified when I do post up a new video. This way next week you can follow me along as I start planting that up and where I'm going to be planting them up and some of the reasons why, other than obviously alliums are pretty cool flowers, but that's again, whole nother discussion for another time. I'm in prattling on. So let's get on with today's stuff. Last night I turned around and after, cause then we got hit with another freeze frost last night, early this morning. Uh, but yesterday I turned around after the first one and I looked at my sweet potato vine and quite a bit of it, quite a bit of the leaves were going black. Now I thought some of it might be okay because there were so many, but by the afternoon I was looking at it going, nah, this is all gotta go. And if I'm taking out all the vines, then I might as well do the harvest. It takes something like roughly two weeks for a sweet potato to cure. I was like, well, if I want sweet potatoes for Thanksgiving, I better get my crack, you better get cracking. So that's what I did. I harvested my sweet potatoes. Now, that was a lot of digging. And I've seen plenty of YouTubers do this. I've seen other TV personalities do this. And you know, you, when you see somebody do something, you're like, wow, that looks tough. But then when you actually do it, it's just, it's backbreaking and you're wow. I'm like, yeah, this is really is tough and sucks. <laughs> uh, mainly because I was trying to get down as deep as I could with my hands to try to feel and find any and all of the sweet potatoes. And what I pulled up was very unusual. It was, uh, so I had a lot of sweet potatoes grow, but they were a lot of them very stringy, very thin, wispy. I got a few decent sized ones, but not too many. So I don't know why that happened. And if you've grown sweet potatoes before, please let me know in the comments below why you think my sweet potatoes didn't get big and fat and bulky. I think I only planted something like six in the bed, six original slips. So did I plant them too far apart? Did it give the sweet potatoes too much room in the, in the raised bed to grow? I think I only did six, something like that. Either way, did I give them too much room to grow? Is that why they got all thin and wispy? It was weird. I mean, this is what they looked like at the end when I was all said and done and I put them in the greenhouse to start curing. And I've seen a bunch of different ways to cure your sweet potatoes. 
I was going to go with, I'm going with the simplest one that I saw, which was basically you keep them in a fairly warm space, a la the greenhouse. It's supposed to be around 80 degrees, 85 degrees. You don't want them to get too hot. Otherwise, obviously they start cooking and you cover it, can cover it with like a uh, quilt and that will help retain the moisture within the sweet potato. So yeah, that's what I'm going with. And I'll let you know in a couple of weeks, whether they're a total disaster, whether I cooked them or not, or whether they actually did what they were supposed to do and hardened up and whether we can make anything out of it. If my wife can make some sort of maybe sweet potato, mashed potatoes or something out of that, out of what I've made, I've grown, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. I'm sure all of it is edible, but whether it'll taste good at the end and whether it'll be enough to make a bowl of like, again, sweet mashed potatoes, I don't know, but we'll see. Let me know your comments and thoughts below of what you think happened and why it happened and maybe what I could do to improve things for next year. But that being said, now let's start planting garlic. All right, so last year I grew two large beds of garlic and I grew a couple of different varieties. Oh, and there was an extra bed too because my wife had purchased some, so there's actually three beds, three beds of garlic. And because my wife had purchased some garlic and one of the varieties that she purchased really didn't grow all that well, which was very disappointing, chestnut red. I've never grown it before. I've never grown a lot of things before, but chestnut red, I didn't grow, I've never grown before. And strangely, it didn't really, you know, did it whole leaves thing. It, but the bulbs were either very, very small or virtually non-existent. You know, they stayed as almost a seedling as it were, which was very odd and unusual. So nonetheless, the other garlic varieties I grew, which was California white, California soft neck, Deerfield purple, something with German in the name, can't remember. But either way, I grew all those and they grew fine. I don't know if you can see it in the shot right here behind me, but this cinnamon basil is just, just rocking with flowers. And what you guys can't see is that there's a bunch of pollinators on this thing. This is actually a bed where I'm gonna be planting some of my garlic, but not today. Uh, I want to leave this probably for another week or so, let the pollinators do their thing, enjoy life while they can, because eventually all the flowers will be gone, which would be very sad. This bed, though, this is where I'm going to start planting up my garlic. And the varieties I'm going to plant out today are the California garlic, which I kept over from last year, Texas rose, Spanish roja, and chestnut red. I'm going to try that one again. If you've never planted garlic before, why not? It's super duper easy. Uh, if you're thinking about getting into gardening, if you want to start gardening, if you're questioning what do I grow now in the fall slash winter, even if you're in a northern climate, garlic is the answer. Seriously, go online. There's plenty of retailers now that are looking to get rid of those last minute, you know, whatever they hadn't sold already. Burpees, Johnny Seeds, uh, So True Seeds. There's a whole list. If you actually go over to growinggreenfinger.com, uh, I believe it's under more or, yeah, I think it's under more on the top tabs there. There's a resource page and I have a ton of different stores and places where you can go to buy seeds and garlic, etc. But right now there's probably a bunch of sales that you can go ahead and get, uh, you know, yourself some garlic for cheap to try. And you don't have to buy a lot. Just get the smallest quantity if you want, if you're new, if you're new. If you're an expert gardener, like I'm sure many of you are, or more, a lot more experienced than I am, all of what I've just said, you already know. So let's just start the planting. Uh, like I said, I'm doing a couple of different varieties. The other th thing that was brought to my attention, God, probably years after I started gar uh, growing garlic, was try to plant the largest cloves that you can get. And this way, the, you get the, then the biggest bulbs. I mean, that's the theory at least. I don't know if it's scientifically proven. So in essentially what you're just gonna do is stick, take your your clove, in case you, again, let me show you what you don't, in case you don't know. So this is a garlic clove, and it's essentially part of the garlic bulb. And that's the bottom, and the tip is the top. Pretty simple. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna stick it in approximately two inches down. That's basically double the depth, double the size of the clove. So if the clove is about two inches, you're gonna plant it about two inches. I mean, that's, it's just basic thing. Then you're gonna plant them about four to six inches apart. Again, you experienced gardeners, you will know all this. Uh, and then they say that your rows should be about two inches apart, which I don't know, I would still go with four inches. 
I was reading two inches apart for a row and I was like, well, if I have to put the bulbs one way, four to six inches, why wouldn't I go four inches at least for the spacing? Stick your bulbs in, cloves. I keep calling them bulbs. They're actually cloves. It's another thing too that you should take note of is as you're planting these, if you have a clove that feels soft, probably is rotten. Oh, not all garlic cloves come in perfect condition. So th these happen to be ones that I saved, but I've gotten cloves from, again, burpees, Johnny Seeds, wherever online, and they've actually sometimes been a little soft and rotten. Obviously cover everything up with dirt if you've made a little mess and label, of course, where what you've done. Now I'm gonna do one other thing here for this bed. There's a lot of background noise. I do apologize for that. I'm gonna take a little bamboo cane here and I'm just gonna use it to mark where I was, <laughs> that, that portion of the bed. And then I'm gonna start planting up the rest with the Texas rose. Did I mention in the beginning of this video my Etsy store? I don't think I did. I have an Etsy store if you didn't know. You can check out the link below. You can go there and pick up some uh, art prints, magnets, and hopefully in the upcoming weeks slash months, I will have yet more stuff uh, available, but that's to come. In the meantime, back to this, got my, at least I started my garlic planting today. And again, I got my California, I don't know if it's the white California white or so, soft neck. I suspect it's the California soft neck. I just didn't label it well. <laughs> Texas rose, I got planted up. And actually I discovered more garlic in the house when I took a break because I had to let the landscapers finish doing what they were doing. Any hoot, uh, I found Romanian red and more Spanish Roja. So apparently I will have a lot of Spanish Roja. So I will have three beds of garlic this year. I was not intending to plant so much garlic, but these things happen. This bed right here behind me will be one of those beds where I plant the garlic. I'll be clearing this out probably in the next couple of weeks. You can basically plant garlic until you can no longer work the ground. And again, I'm in growing zone 8A, so I can plant right up until like December. I mean, the ground never freezes here, so I don't have to worry. But if you're in a northern climate, you probably want to get your garlic into the ground before hard freezes start freezing the ground. If you have a different opinion or a different thought or want to add something to the conversation, again, leave those comments below. But uh, this bed, I'll get cleared out. I will fill back up because it's sunken down quite a bit and I'll fill that up with raised bed mix. I kind of want to leave it in place as long as possible again, just for the pollinators. So that'll be bed. I don't know what other bed I might use for the garlic. I'm looking at some of my other beds now. And I'm trying to think ahead to spring because whatever you plant now in these beds, for instance, whatever I plant in these beds now, I won't be able to use these beds again until 4th of July-ish. Uh, that's basically how long it takes the garlic to get to full maturity. Uh, depends upon weather, temperature, et cetera, et cetera. But roughly, let's say 4th of July-ish. So these beds will not be used for anything in the spring. Whatever third bed I pick uh, to plant the remaining garlic, that will also be the same case. So I have to think ahead to the spring. What will I be planting? Where will I be planting it? So a little bit of planning is involved, not the end of the world. Let me show you real quick before we wrap up this video. So in this bed and the bed behind it, I have some fall crops, fall winter crops. And what I have in the beginning of this bed is a marigold, I believe. Uh, it's an orange one. Surprisingly, it survived the last two light frosts we had in the uh, recent evenings. Now, going forward, probably for the next month or so, I don't expect to see another freeze or frost, but we'll have to see how Mother Nature goes and swings. At least for the next 10 days, it's only going to get down to 50 degrees at night, which is wonderful. The uh, remainder of the bed is filled up with red onions. And in speaking to my some of the locals, I can grow the red onions right throughout the winter. So that's the plan here. And again, hopefully everything turns out well with these. In the bed behind that there, I have my carrots growing. And as you can see, they're doing quite well. So hopefully with the cooler temperatures, it'll make the carrots a little sweeter. 
That's been my uh, experience and that's what I've heard. And hopefully they'll be ready for harvest sometime in mid-December, maybe. We'll have to wait and see. Oh, I'm really looking forward to that. Now, I do have a bed all the way in the back that I had my sweet potatoes in that I did grow garlic in last year, but I'm thinking about leaving that bed to rest over the winter and I might do sweet potatoes in that bed again next year. We'll have to wait and see. It was my birthday earlier in the week and if you guys would be a sport, please go check out those links below or head over to growinggrainfinger.com and check out some of the links there on the homepage. If you don't follow me on Instagram, give a follow on Instagram, or you can just go over to growinggrainfinger.com and scroll the way to the bottom where I do have my most recent Instagram pictures posted. So you can see what was what, what's going on here and around the garden. I always try to post content differently on the different areas. So the YouTube community page is a little different than the YouTube channel here, which is a little different from the Instagram stuff. So again, give a follow on all those uh, places there. I think that's going to wrap it up for today. Don't forget, Monday we're going to start planting up the allium bulbs and a few other bulbs. So, again, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I'll catch you on Monday. Bye-bye.